This TikToker with 4 million followers has written and or produced some of the biggest records of the past 15 years. 29 of those reaching number one on the Billboard Hot 100. Love Yourself by Justin Bieber, Perfect by Ed Sheeran, I Kissed a Girl by Katy Perry, Diamonds by Rihanna, Moves Like Jagger, and many, many more. The well, year is 2004. Insane. A 16-year-old named Benjamin is cold calling record labels trying to show them some music, but they keep slamming the phone down before he can finish his sales pitch. Benjamin has to get creative. He goes online, scrolling hundreds of sketchy and unreliable websites trying to get the phone numbers of important people in the music industry. This is before Google had all the right answers. He discovers Jay-Z's lawyer's phone number. He calls and says there's a pressing matter that the CEO needs to address immediately. He gets sent through to the lawyer, but there was no issue. He just wanted to show him some of the music he made. Who cares about pride? Just keep calling someone until they answer. <laughs> I wish I could tell you this is how he made his big break, but Benjamin Levin, aka Benny Blanco, doesn't actually belong in the music industry. Unfortunately, a lot of success stories in music involve taking advantage of people, being manipulative, and really using others as a stepping stone for you to get to the next level. The only other way is to be in the right place at the right time, along with having a massive amount of talent. You will come to realize that Benny, time and time again, ended up in rooms with massive stars almost accidentally. 1993, Benny is a five-year-old who is obsessed with music. He has an old boombox and a couple of Nas tapes. He starts singing, then making beats on tables, pots and pans, hitting them with his hands. He messes around with the record function, layering recordings of his table beats and adolescent vocals, literally producing his first creations like a young prodigy. At age nine, he won a music competition through his school that allowed him to work in a real studio. He recorded his first rap song called Easy Life. After the session, Benny knew where the rest of his life was headed. The obsessive tween spent all of his free time making raps inspired by Eminem, and he would experiment with beat making. Every summer, he went to a Jewish sleepaway camp called Mount Airy, showing his friends what he had been working on all year. He even met his present day manager there when he was just eight years old. His older brother, Jeremy, who absolutely adored Benny and wanted him to be successful, was in his freshman year at the University of Delaware and would bring Benny up to his fraternity to perform at parties. Benny was about 13 at the time. One of Jeremy's his fraternity Why brother Sam Blanco was an aspiring like musician himself, oil. and I'm guessing he was a little bit music industry connected. Because he had access to a nice studio, which I'm assuming was in New York City, and very shortly after this, Benny's rapping caught the attention of The Source magazine and Columbia Records. Before the internet, A&Rs had to be in the know with local musicians. Word of mouth was everything. And knowing a guy who knows a guy was basically the only way to get attention. Mm. Because shortly after Benny met Sam, he got noticed by Jonathan Schechter, founder of The Source magazine. Jonathan paid 13-year-old Benny $500 to make a couple of beats for a softcore porn DVD series he started what called Hip Hop Honeys. Benny would slow down on his rapping from here on out and focus on production. Throughout high school, Ben made as many five-hour bus trips to New York as possible. Luckily, he had his grandmother in East Orange, New Jersey to stay with. Keeping what his few music world? industry connections close and attending as many meetings as possible, he was just begging for more smoke. music work. When he was back home in Virginia, he did the cold calls to the record labels. And then on the internet, he was trying to find Jimmy Iovine's email. He added anyone on MySpace who maybe could have had some music industry connections, grinding to even see another sliver of music industry work. One day he gets an email response from a Brooklyn DJ named Disco D. He said, I'm leaving for Brazil next week and you're going to come and fill the studio for me. If you book someone to work at the studio every day of the week, you're hired. And Benny had that studio booked the entire time. Disco D wanted to keep That's him around. Then he graduated high school and attended the Institute of Audio Research in New York to be closer to D. Disco D became a mentor to Benny and he pushed him to be the best he could be. He would delete his projects mid-session, erase his completed works and throw his CDs in the trash, forcing him to start over and get better. He pushed Benny to be more interesting, more experimental, and take more musical risk. Disco D tragically passed away in 2007 by suicide. In his honor, Benny stepped away from hip-hop and dove into more experimental sounds. Benny wanted to work with D's good friend Naeem, aka Spankrock. This is where the Bangers and Cash EP was born. Although the EP was experimental and a little left of center, they got picked up by the label Downtown Records. After a little bit of media coverage, local buzz, and industry buzz from the Bangers and Cash EP, a woman by the name of Marav from Songs Publishing reached out to Benny. She wanted to offer him his first publishing deal. It was in mid-2007 where opportunities started coming his way. The days of him begging for music music industry work are about to be long gone. The publishing deal with Marav fell through, but she decided to introduce Benny to Dr. Luke, who's one of the most decorated pop music songwriters and producers in the early 2000s, working on songs like Since You've Been Gone, Right Round by Flo Rida, Girlfriend by Ever Levine, the list goes on. Benny has one meeting with Dr. Luke, in which he thinks goes terrible. 
I met him. I thought he didn't Bye. like me. <laughs> and then, like, turns out he did. And Luke asks him to make music with him that weekend. Luke then introduces him to Max Martin, who has wrote tons of iconic songs. And then he immediately gets thrown into a writing session with Britney Spears. Because I never made pop music. I didn't know anything about pop music, really. So some guy who was just making niche booty bounce club rap and knows nothing about pop music gets introduced to two songwriting legends and after one meeting gets thrown into rooms with massive pop stars. Why? I don't know. I guess they saw something in Benny. Maybe Happy they could just see his potential up. beyond what a typical a person would no. XQC. Because after years of cold calling, right, and only getting to talk to booty people on only a little bit of time, he probably got good at talking to people and selling them dog shit. But he wasn't dog shit, he was good, so I don't know. Let's see. Maybe... To me, this is what this, I feel that, like this is what it is. They just liked his personality. We can't really say why they initially believed in him, but they were clearly right about him considering how his career went. Can you just double check and make sure you're subscribed? Wouldn't hurt to like the video and maybe take a sip of water as well. Benny became essentially an apprentice for Dr. Luke and Max Martin. He was in the real deal music industry now, writing and producing for Katy Perry and Britney Spears. And just when you think the story is going to be that he rode the coattails of Luke and Max for the rest of his career, he did something else. You see, Benny still had to prove himself. Yes, he was in the rooms with big artists, but he wasn't running the show by any means. He was a student, essentially. He used the things he learned from these guys and implemented them on artists that he was collaborating with on the side. He stumbled into a session with an electronic duo called 303 to help them with a song. But but then they came up with an entirely new idea, and in a drunken soiree, they ended up making the biggest songs that 303 would oh, ever yeah, we made. Oh, yeah, we Benny was still nah, much nah, more into nah. weird, electronic indie music than pop, so 303 was the perfect duo for him. The song Don't Trust Me would yeah, hit number classic, seven yeah. on the Billboard Hot 100, and this was Benny's most successful song that he didn't work on with Luke and Martin. He was a great addition to Luke and Martin's production nah, 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 team, nah, nah, but he also nah, just proved nah, that he nah, could make nah, hits nah, without nah, nah. them. Now he was a force to be reckoned with. Him and Katy Perry hit it off, so they were working on more music. Dr. Luke signed Kesha, and Benny wrote and or produced literally all of her popular songs. He worked with Tayo Cruz. Yo. She's gonna cut the cat. You wanna get the cat out? Yeah, no, she's gotta go to bedtime. The cat's bedtime, look. Say goodnight, bro. Come on, bro, she wants to stay, man. <laughs> My mom said you do it for free. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's about the coots. Is that coots? Coots. All right, bye-bye. Good night. I'll be silent all the night, okay? Yeah, you're good, you're good. What's that? I said you're right. Yeah, yeah, All right, see you in the morning. Coots and wrote all of his big songs, basically. Stereo Hearts by Gym Class Heroes, Moves Like Jagger by Maroon 5, oh, wow. No Sleep by Wiz Khalifa. I mean, 2009 to 2011, the Billboard was flooded with songs that Benny either wrote or produced, and he was just 23 years old. By 2012, he was getting press coverage and interviews, and word was out that Benny Blanco is a music industry songwriter and producer you need to know. He was able to get a little bougie from here. First of all, I don't work with anyone who's not my friend. Once you make a name for yourself, you get to move like a boss. Benny decided he's only going to work with people who he has a genuine connection with. You see, Benny attributes most of his success to him being a good hang. For me, when I'm producing a record, your only job in the studio is to keep a good vibe and be a good therapist. That's it. That's your only job. If you can make the artist feel comfortable enough to spill out what they want or at least tell you what they want, then you did your job. This makes sense. In the industry, you will constantly find yourself in rooms where you don't know everyone. There's an intern, some random manager in the corner, maybe even people in the room that secretly want to see you fail, I don't know. So if you have someone goofy and silly like Benny, you can relax. Let go of unnecessary stresses and reach your true creative potential. I got a shit. That was the email that Benny sent to Ed Sheeran before they became best friends. If someone types I got a shit on an email after not responding for four days, 99% of people are not going to respond to your emails ever again. But it just so happens that what one person fuck? thought it was hilarious, and Ed Sheeran and Benny would end up making some of their biggest works together. And obviously Ed Sheeran became like the biggest pop star in the world. <laughs> Kanye West and Benny Blanco. Reborn was the track they did together, which is actually Real. my personal favorite on the project. True, this collab same. wouldn't have happened without Benny doing some free work for an artist named Francis and the Lights. And then I make records with Francis and the Lights. And, and, and who? You know, with the Francis album, I did that album for free because I thought it was incredible. He moved into my house. I, he was one of my favorite artists I ever seen. And because you do things because you feel and you be, and because of the art and because you're doing it for culture, yeah. doing that 
got me in with some of my favorite artists in the world because people respected the music that I was doing with Francis. It's like, I got to work with Bon Iver because of Francis. I got to work with Kanye West because of Francis. You know, The Weeknd hit me up because of Francis. Just like the Spank Rock EP in 2007, working with Francis and the Lights just for the love of music is actually what got him to the next level in his career. Because by 2008, Benny had worked with literally every big star you can name. Bieber, Selena, Halsey, Khalid, Juice World. I mean, the only people left are Kanye and Drake. Still hasn't worked with Drizzy. The main difference between Benny and every other songwriter is that he's uh, actually pretty guy. publicly famous. Most songwriters are these hidden people in the background of the music industry that have all the secret sauce and they quietly craft all the hits that you and I absorb. Benny has a great personal brand. Lil in 2018, Dickie. he started openly collaborating with people as an artist and executive producer rather than a songwriter. Then in 2020, he started a successful YouTube series with his friend Maddie Matheson. He even started his real Hollywood acting career in the show Dave. But he had been making appearances in various music videos over the years, so being in front of the camera wasn't exactly new to him. But of course, TikTok is the big reason for all of this. <laughs> Benny has basically just made viral TikTok after viral TikTok, just simply stating all of the songs he wrote while they play in the background. Winning over Gen Z with that round face, poofy hair, and infectious smile. He's just very likable. Benny can make it seem like being a successful artist is this magical process where you make something really nice and everyone hears it and agrees it's great and says, wow, we should promote this for you. And we all get. Dude, I got so many like hardcore rumors in chat. It's insane. Like, this is. Dude, dude, this guy's kind of a low key dick rider. Bro, bro, this is like, like, like a mini doc, almost. It's like, this is an informative piece. This is not, this is not even, this is barely opinionated. How is he dick writing it? It's barely opinionated. Like, what? Hey, XQC, can I get a welcome to the Big Dick Club, XQCL? Yo, this is X, X on yeah. the beat, yo. Okay. Why my voice as well? That S. Anyone knows that boy? I don't know, he's just so soy. Anyone knows that boy? I don't know, he's just so soy.